So, Dr. Cosby, I uh, I just purchased your book. And I'm very grateful. <laughs> no, get, well, no, no, no more grateful, grateful than I am. Now, it's called Getting to the Promised Land. Yes, sir. That sounds pretty big to me. Yeah. Then it has a subtitle. You want to talk about this for just a second? Uh, yeah. Well, first of all, uh, welcome to the ADOS conference. It's been a phenomenal conference. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, in the midst of COVID-19, mm -hmm. uh, I think we've uh, exercised wise health protocols mm -hmm. and but uh, yet people have come and I think in many ways uh, this this conference this year exceeds our initial conference and I thought the initial conference was phenomenal but anyway back to back to your I'm your with question. you I was at the initial conference good for too. you man. I was, I was good going for you. like hey good for okay. you well um, the unfinished work of the civil rights movement mm -hmm. I think that it's interesting that the civil rights movement can be bracketed in between two assassinations. If you're looking for the historical era for the civil rights movement, where legislation was, was actually passed. So you're, talking about, you're talking about Major Evers and, and, and no? You're talking two about... major assassinations. Okay, so... The beginning of it and the end of it. Okay, so that, would that be Martin Luther King? No? And that's the end. That's the end. So Malcolm the is end. the beginning? No. The beginning of the civil rights movement in terms of legislation. Okay. Okay, so you're talking about civilian rights mm -hmm. legislation, the beginning of the modern day civil rights movement. Now, mm -hmm. it, it, there were events that took place that helped to foster it along. Mm -hmm. But if you're talking about legislation, the two assassinations are these, mm -hmm. and it's critical. November the second, excuse me, November the twenty second, mm -hmm. at one p.m. at the Parker Memorial Hospital. John Fitzgerald exactly. Kennedy was pronounced dead mm -hmm. uh, from the bullet and bullets mm -hmm. of Lee Harvey Oswald. Yeah, so was, 1 p.m. Yeah. 1 p.m. at Parkland Memorial Hospital. Mm -hmm. That's the first assassination. Mm -hmm. That's in 63. Five years later, in 68, at about 5 p.m. in the evening, on the Lorraine Motel mm -hmm. in Memphis, Tennessee, Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. Okay. So the yeah. first assassination was mm -hmm. Kennedy, second, closing it, is King. And during those five years, legislation was passed for the purpose mm -hmm. of giving black people citizenship rights. Mm -hmm. And the legislation that was passed was the, the following year after K Kennedy's assassination was public accommodations in 64. Mm -hmm. 65, the following year, voting rights legislation. Mm -hmm. 68, about a month after King's assassination, you have uh, public housing laws mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that quote unquote dismantled uh, segregation or the access to good housing. So I want you to think about that. The civil rights movement in terms of legislation was only five years. Exactly. Once 68 ended, the country veered in a different direction towards a grievance industry that compared and equated the black issues of justice with everyone else's issues. So everyone else's issues got elevated, and as a result of that, our issues, mm -hmm. which are, are uncomparable, which has no parallels, our issues got eliminated. Not just, so we not, not just ignored, but eliminated. Eliminated, yeah. so we didn't finish the civil rights struggle because where Dr. King was moving us towards was economic reparations and justice. And until black people have been given reparations, the civil rights movement has been, is not complete. It has been diluted. Mm -hmm. So my book is trying to get us back to say, hey, 
I hear you talking about LGBTQI issues. Hey, I hear you talking about Me Too and women's issues. Mm -hmm. Hey, I hear you talking about immigration. Mm -hmm. But in the midst of this, let us not forget mm -hmm. that we have an issue, namely, uh, with making black people who built the country, who have a unique experience in the United States, making us whole. Well, just, uh, just as a, a, not a side note, but just a, a question, you framed it with the two assassinations. Other people would say, let's deal with just the president, Lyndon Johnson, that those stuff happens between Lyndon Johnson. It's a political thing. So how, to, uh, 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 and he's the one that actually started the whole thing with affirmative, well, law for affirmative action, but shortly afterwards, the Supreme Court said, hey, no, let's put everybody in there. So how do you square all that? I mean, do, do you factor in LBJ? I mean, how do you... Well, LBJ, since it is, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Since it is a political thing, and if, if what I understand, well, my underst my reading of history is that after that, all the presidents after that just just kept on taking stuff away, or, or political po the political game started to take stuff away. I'm just well, they began to equate the black struggle with everyone else's struggle. Um, the women, and I'm not saying that there should not be justice for women. Even, and I'm minimizing the fact that uh, sexism and patriarchy is real. I'm not minimizing that. Neither am I minimizing the legitimate claims that other groups have. But when you begin to blend everyone's issues with our issues, our issues get diluted. Mm -hmm. And the whole ADOS movement is attempting to extrapolate the black issue that has been in many instances co-opted by other groups mm -hmm. to extrapolate it and let it be the singular focus of black people. Let, let me do it this way. Um, I'm associated with a, with a huge community radio station in New York called WBAI, Pacifica Station. And we had a, um, a workshop one time on, on sort of issues, black issues, gender issues, whatever. In the morning they had to wear black issues, and then like, at the end, somewhere near the, near the end, they kept on, the, the other issues kept on saying, just like black people, just like black people. So my question to them was like, well, if everything's just like black people, why don't we just deal with black people first and all the other dominoes will fall? And I bring that up to say that these days, people are not going to allow you to just deal with black issues, but uh, how, how do you... How do you get? How do you get what we what we're trying to do? You know, in other words, if, if some legislation comes, you say, okay, every time you have a legislation, have, have something happens, then we get to the front of the queue. I mean, mm -hmm. that would be a, a way. I'm, not, I'm just making something up. Yeah. Front of the queue. Uh, what other does your uh, 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 book address any of those kind of issues? How do how do we really deal well, with? Well, my issues basically um, focuses exclusively on black issues, mm -hmm. and it's dealing with two biblical characters. It's a biblical story about Nehemiah. Mm -hmm. And this guy named Nehemiah is trying to rebuild a community that has been devastated for over 100 years. Mm -hmm. And he gets a grant to do it. He gets reparations in order to make that happen. Mm -hmm. But once they start building, there are people or other groups who are trying to tap into the resources that were given and set aside exclusively for Nehemiah's people. Mm -mm -mm. And the way they determine whether or not you should be the recipient of the grants to rebuild the wall in front of your house, to rebuild your house, to rebuild your life, is they based it on lineage. Mm. So when you look at the book of Nehemiah, there were some people who were good people who came in and said, we want a part of that money. And Nehemiah said, let's look mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. lineage to see mm -hmm. whether or not you can trace your family back to when, we, when th these Jews first had been decimated in, in five, uh, was it 576 BC or before the Common Era, when they were first decimated by the Babylonians. Mm -hmm. And if you can't trace your lineage because they kept the records back, mm -hmm. then Nehemiah says, no, you don't get any part of this. This is fascinating to me only because, I, I, I hate to say this, but maybe I just don't go to church. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I don't hear a whole lot of preachers wherever they are in the world talking about this situation. 
is this maybe common? that's the reason why you don't go to church much? <laughs> well, <laughs> well I'm, a, I'm so I'm a deist kind of thing, but it doesn't matter. Well, you're, look, man. But but I, I visit I visit a lot. I'm saying I visit like when I'm in when I'm home in Chesapeake. Yeah. I, I go. Uh, uh, there's a basilica now. And, and you know what I'm saying? You have a reason to be a deist. I'm a mm -hmm. I'm a theist. I am a Christian. Mm -hmm. I am a pastor. Mm -hmm. And I believe in God by faith. But you as a deist, not a theist, you got deist, theist, mm -hmm. and atheist. Mm -hmm. There is some legitimacy in why you hold the position that you hold because you're a thinking man. And and to a certain degree, I am a theistic deist. Mm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, first of all, people may not know what deist is. This is just basically somebody says, "Hey, God, put, put God." God, why the word like a watch? Why the word like a watch? Well, yeah, you, but he just says, "Hey, you got it. See you all later." Got some, that's that's to God. That's deism. Yeah, yeah. Deism is that God does not intervene. Okay. In miraculous ways. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I believe that God intervenes. Uh huh. But I believe that God intervenes through human instrumentality. Surely. Mm. That's that's my theism. Mm -hmm. So those who are waiting for the wind, the east wind to blow a Red Sea open, I don't believe that's going to happen. Because if it was going to happen, it should have happened in the 400 plus years in which black people have been dehumanized and thinkified and brutalized. Mm. It has not happened. Frederick Douglass, who was a, a lay AME Zion minister, said that when he was a slave, he prayed to God that God would deliver him from slavery, and God didn't do it. Mm. Then he said, I prayed with my feet. Mm. And after mm -hmm. praying with mm -hmm. my feet, mm -hmm. which means walking away, mm -hmm. that's how he got delivered. That's, that's healthy theistic deism in the sense that mm -hmm. it was God who gave them the consciousness. Many times, mm -hmm. people who think they're not Christian are Christian. They just don't know the labels mm -hmm. because it's been misidentified. Mm -hmm. For example, spirituality. People say, I don't believe in spirituality. You know, you, you can't see God. And I say, well, you can't, if you go, you know, I can't see the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Well, if you go get an x-ray, mm -hmm. I promise you, you will not be able to see on the x-ray the Holy Spirit inside a person. However, you will not mm -hmm. be able to see fear either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. X-rays don't pick up fear. X-rays don't pick up rage. Mm -hmm. X-rays don't pick up passion. Mm -hmm. But you have them even though because they are spiritual realities. Mm -hmm. And you, you, the only reason you're here, you wouldn't be here in Louisville, Kentucky, from where you are, from South Africa, being here in Louisville, if inside you, you didn't have the spirit of God in you, making you passionate about injustice. Paul Tillich, who Martin Luther King Jr. did his theological dissertation on, he studied mm -hmm. Tillich at Boston University. Mm -hmm. Tillich said, God is the spirit in you that makes you angry with injustice. Mm -hmm. You just didn't know it was, who it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, but, but, but I, have, I, I could talk to you forever about this kind of stuff, but tell me again, best of all, first of all, it's, it's called... Uh, yeah. Getting to the promised land, uh, yes. black the America, and the unfinished, unfinished work. work. So they, 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 they stopped work. working on black issues in 68. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then they started working on everybody else's issues. Yeah. And then unfortunately, guess what? Black leadership in this country started working now, on everybody that, else's that, issues but our issues. That's what I was going And guess what we're me. trying to do? We're trying to get black leadership and black America to start working on our issues. But the question right. is, who is the R? The R is those who are um, descendants who are, um, in the United mm -hmm. States of chattel slavery. Yeah. Work on our issues because the, the centuries of white supremacy and white brutalization towards the, 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 the slaves and their descendants, those, those, the consequences are with us today in terms of health disparities, uh, in terms of uh, education, most more importantly, in terms of the wealth disparity. Mm -hmm. And that's because we didn't finish the work of the civil rights movement. We, we ended it, it got diluted, uh, it, it got redefined, it got redefined as quote unquote integration. Uh, we didn't want to be integrated into white space. We wanted to be integrated into white wealth, white power, and white privilege, which means citizenship, 
citizenship rights. Well, isn't that what the leaders have done? They've integrated themselves, leaving the mass, so-called, I don't want to say masses, but the people behind. But my problem right now... Man, you sound is, like a theist. <laughs> but, <laughs> Why do you call yourself a deist when you preach like a theist? Okay, look, I always follow Mr. <laughs> Neil Fuller Jr. And he calls himself an eclectic pluralism. You so I like that. I like eclectic that. Eclectic pluralism. That's yeah. actually what I am. I go to different. I, look, yes. I, I've been to the Holy City of Two Bar. I've been bathed in the Gandhis. I have a bunch of stuff. Oh, sorry. Ooh, I'm just right. having I'm fun not, with you. Man. Yeah. I know, I know. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Here's my, here's, here's, here's my question. So it seems as though they, they I'm talking, we have unfinished speech, but the leaders they do not go back and say, and, and deal with what they didn't finish. Yeah, well, that's so, the difference between I'm, I'm, leaders I'm, I'm, and office holders. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay, we got office holders. Ah, uh, and that's why they get paid. They to, get paid. That's an office holder. Ah, uh, yes. Yvette okay. Carnell and Antonio Moore, they're leaders. Okay. That's why okay. we're here. You know, okay. 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 Uh, leaders are people who have a vision, who understand what the issues are, and who are committed to tangible, measurable, quantifiable results. Mm. Our problem is the absence of leaders who mm -hmm. advocate for our group. Mm. And so new leadership is emerging oh, okay. oh. that is accountable, that is independent, courageous, and is accountable to black people alone. Okay. Well, thank you so much for this time. If there's anything else, just tell me, I want you to sell your book. <laughs> yes, the, the name of the book I mean, is you know, Getting about... to the Promised Land, um, Black America and the Unfinished Work of the Civil Rights Movement. It is forwarded by the brilliant uh, Dr. Cornel West. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a biblical blueprint based on the study of Nehemiah and Ezra mm -hmm. on, on, as, a, as a model and blueprint for how black America, namely the American descendants of slavery, mm -hmm. can uh, move towards and develop a path towards true justice. Mm. And you will only have true justice when black people are economically repaired mm. for the exploitation and the damage that has been the atrocity that has been committed against us. Thank you so much. Look, look, I have to say one more thing. I, I have to ask this to be a question also. Your talk, your oration, your whatever you want to call it you did yesterday was so magnificent. I can't, everybody was just buzzing. I mean, was, they, were, they were, I don't know, like hairs, whatever was coming up on them. Is that going to be available on YouTube? Or some, somebody see that because it was just so powerful. I just... Uh, it affected a lot of people. I'm just, you know, how many people are going to read the book? I'm not, I'm not saying right. that. You know, but yeah. that thing is I, I think it will be. Uh, I'm not sure about all of the uh, mm. logistics, but hopefully it will be online. Okay, last question. This is a spiritual question. So where does that come from? In other words, to, to have that much fire, to have that much knowledge, and then be able to impart it. I mean, because like I said, there was sort of like, I know we're in a sanctuary when you delivered it, but I mean, there had to come someplace, from someplace. What, what, what is it that I want to say, what is it that drives you? What, what kind of spirit keeps you sustained and, and blah, blah, blah? That's I mean, a good question. That's why I'm a theist, because I can only attribute it to God, that there is a God who is on our side, that the black liberation theologians like James Cone and mm. Cecil Cone and mm. Gayrod Wilmore <laughs> taught us that God is on the side of the oppressed. And one of the ways that I experience God is with my utter rage mm. with white supremacy. Mm. So I attribute that to God. Now, somebody mm. else may call it something else. That's, that's their prerogative, mm. as long as we get the same results. Mm. One of the ways I know that you are a God-fearing person is you hate the things that God hates, and you love the things that God loves. Mm. And according to the biblical mm. record, one thing God hates is oppression. Amen. But Amen. we don't realize mm. that because we have allowed whites to do our Bible interpretation from us. Let me say this thing, which may be the most important thing that anyone can hear. The Bible is not a self-interpreting book. It does not come with instructions which says, this is more important than this, this is where you start, this is how you look at a scripture. It's not a self-interpreting book. 
Human beings interpret the Bible, and they bring to the Bible their, their biases, their exposure, their experiences, and they look into the Bible to find things that help justify their presuppositions. The problem is, is that when you've got a, a, a wolf who is interpreting the Bible for the sheep, then the sheep become their own worst enemy. Mm -hmm. It's only when the sheep bring their issues to the Bible Mm. and say, no, this is what the Bible says to sheep, that the sheep are going to be liberated. Mm. If you've got what's called a, a wolf hermeneutic, and you're a sheep, you're through. Mm. You need sheep hermeneutic, sheep interpretation, sheep understanding of the Bible, sheep understanding of history, sheep understanding of reality, mm. in order to truly be liberated. So for me... When I, even when I read, not only a Bible, when I read history, mm. I, I'm not concerned about what Thomas Jefferson said. I'm not concerned about what George Washington said. That's not history to me. History, for me, as, as, a, as a victim of, a, of America's crime against humanity, history for me asked questions, what were my ancestors thinking? Mm, mm, mm. What were my ancestors feeling? Mm. So... Um, Man, well, thank you. No, 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 thank you. It, 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 you know, I grew up in the South Bronx, and we, it, it, we don't, we don't, we never. A guy never tells the other guy, "I love you." I know they do that in sports now. We always say, "I got your back." I, I love just you, brother. Tell you, I got your back. Thank you, and I love you, and I got yours, man. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Okay, man. Take thank care. you so much. Good. Okay.